So over the past few days, I've received dozens of questions from people asking, are they gonna see an increase to their social security benefits? Well, I want to address that. I wanna talk about the fight over more benefits versus less. Because yes, there are multiple proposals out there for social security. Some are pushing for uh, you know additional benefits. For example, Senator Bernie Sanders, uh, he is pushing for that $2,400 boost per year, that's per recipient. That's a $200 increase every single month. So that is something that is still uh, you know, up for discussion. It's, it's very unlikely that it's gonna go through, but it is part of the mix. Uh, others, they wanna see uh, the way that Social Security is run. They want changes to it. Uh, there's a new bill or a new proposal that's looking to modify taxes in a way that both parties would potentially support. And then we also have those proposals that are so far, you know, you know, so far from reality that we don't even talk about those. So again, you know, there are a lot of proposals out there. There's some that are, uh, they're, they have a higher chance of making it and being considered, but then there, there's also those that nobody would even consider, nobody would vote for. So I'm gonna address some of these proposals in just a moment, but first, the big news out today is regarding Social Security as a whole and whether or not this is the best the program can ultimately be. Again, some people, some lawmakers are saying that Social Security has a lot of improvement. Some lawmakers have long said that Social Security and Medicare are full of flaws and that right now the, the ones, um, the proposals that are being considered are the ones that are closest to what we currently have. The ones that are making all these changes, those are considered uh, you know, less likely. Now, what I can tell you is that lawmakers have been attempting to get legislation passed for some time that would completely alter these two programs. Even Senator Joe Manchin asked um, just the other day, he said this, is there a better program? Is there a better way uh, younger people can invest and have something for retirement? I don't know. But the reason why this is so important is because they're asking the questions. Is there a better program? Is there a better way for younger people to invest and have something for retirement? And for most people, the answer is gonna be no. Because the average person, the average American, is finds it difficult to save, finds it difficult to put money aside for retirement, just finds it difficult to deal with finances in general. So because of that one fact, what we know is that having the American people save for ourselves, invest for ourselves, it's very unlikely that it would happen. And in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you know, somewhere down the road, when all these people decide it's time to retire and they look at their, their retirement accounts and then they realize, I got nothing. I just can't retire. But at the same time, if they can't pay for their, their own way, there's no social security, there's no retirement, they can't work, then what do they do? Well, that's where some say it then becomes a government issue. So is there a better program? Possibly. Are we going to completely alter social security? Well, I don't know, but it's a statement like this that makes me wonder if lawmakers are getting more reports that we aren't getting. Are they getting more information that the American people just aren't seeing? We know there's flaws regarding Social Security and Medicare, but why all these statements now? Why are lawmakers questioning it? Is it just because both programs are approaching insolvency or is it something else? Now. I've talked about this, uh, I talked about this you know, a few months ago, but it's becoming more relevant now than ever before. Because in the past, lawmakers, they, they talked about blowing up the entire program and starting over. It went from that to then the talks were more about managing social security and Medicare. Let's just manage what we have. Let's make minor tweaks, manage it better and then it will be solvent in the next 75 years. Well, now there are lawmakers that are looking for support in proposals that would completely change the entire system. 
Now, Senator Joe Manchin said the other day, and I quote, only thing I'm telling you I'm not going to discuss is cutting Social Security and Medicare for those people that are receiving and have been depending on it, that have worked hard and earned it. Now with that, you have to look at everything. How do you sustain what we have? Good question. How do you sustain what we have? Not completely alter it. How do you sustain what we have? Again, it comes down to managing it correctly. But are we going to see it managed correctly? Well, that's up for debate. Now, let's talk about some of these bills. Let's talk about some of the things that are being considered. Well, just yesterday, two senators, uh, Senator uh, Sherrod Brown and Susan Collins, who's actually a Republican out of Maine, they introduced the Social Security Fairness Act. Or actually, they reintroduced the Social Security Fairness Act. This bill, this would repeal the, the WEP, which is the uh, the windfall elimination uh, provision, I believe, and the, the government uh, pension offset, okay? The, the GPO. So so essentially what this, this um, in reintroducing this, this uh, bill, the Social Security Fairness Act would do, essentially what this does is it would reduce the, or essentially what this does, it, it uh, reduces Social Security benefits that are paid to retirees. But uh, so this reduces their benefits because they were working in for a public employer and their time working for a public employer, they didn't pay into Social Security. So because of the WE, uh, WEP, the uh, windfall elimination pr uh, provision, uh, they don't get their full benefit. Now, the reason for this repeal is because, again, these retirees, they are looking like they didn't make much money because they weren't paying into the system while they were working for that public employer. Whether or not they were working somewhere else and working for the public employer or not really doesn't matter, but it looks like they were not making as much money. They didn't contribute as much, so they weren't, uh, they're weren't. they not going to get as much money back now. That's a problem. But this bill, it would provide a larger benefit to these retirees. Now, there is no way that the House, in my opinion, is going to get this bill passed. And it's currently because in this bill, okay, in the uh, Social Security Fairness Act, again, that was reintroduced just the other day, in this bill, there's no uh, provision in here that talks about increasing revenue in order to offset for this additional expense. So because of that, I don't think Republicans would ever go for this. But again, we don't know. Now, obviously, we still have the one proposal that would still being worked on. I talked about this yesterday. Um, but in this most recent proposal, uh, the two senders want to create a sovereign wealth fund and increase the payroll tax in the event that the fund can't return the 8% per year. That's big because according to reports, there's a lot of bipartisan support surrounding this, uh, this provision within this proposal so far. But again, it's still being worked on. The one part of the proposal that's likely not going to get any support from uh, Democrats is the fact, and some Republicans aren't going to support this either, but the fact that they're trying to raise the full retirement age from age 67 up to age 70. That is one of the downfalls of this current proposal, but again, it's still being worked on. Now, like Senator Joe Manchin said earlier this week, we can't only raise taxes. We can't only provide cuts. We must do a combination of the, the different plans in order to ensure the solvency of Social Security and Medicare. We're going to see what happens moving forward. Now, the reason why I continue to talk about Social Security is because Social Security and Medicare, more so Social Security, this is one of the biggest discussions. This is one of the biggest talking points. It's not the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling has to be addressed, but Social Security is being tied to the debt ceiling. So somebody asked me today, why do you continue to talk about Social Security when, you know, we'll see changes when we see changes? Well, the fact of the matter is, no, we're not going to see changes when we see changes. What's going to happen is we are going to, uh, and what lawmakers do all the time, is they they leak these little reports and they let the media go out and you know spread the, the report and spread the news. 
and then they they wait. They wait for feedback. They wait for the calls in to their uh, to their representatives, to the state representatives. Like, hey, you know, we can't do that. You better fight for that. You're, you you know, we we don't need that. All right, you need to change it. That's what they're waiting for. So the fact of the matter is this: the reason why I continue to provide these these updates and almost on a daily basis over the past week is because there's a lot of changes happening right now. You need to know what these changes are because these could impact you. I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I'm far from uh, retirement age, okay, or for, from social security. But the, the, the truth is this, even though I'm far from it, if they raise taxes on, you know, income, you know, let's say up over, you know, $160,000, well, I, I could be impacted, right? So that's a big issue. And so whether I'm impacted there, um, they decide to raise uh, you know, the payroll tax rate up over 6.2% for the employee and 6.2% for the employer, well, that impacts me as well. And it'll probably impact you as well. So again, that's why I continue to keep you updated. So do yourself a favor, go ahead, hit that like button. Well, it actually does me a favor. And uh, do yourself a favor, make sure you click that subscribe button so you never miss an update. That is what we got for you guys today. Hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.